here's a rational equation. This doesn't look too hard, right? There's only two variables in it, and it doesn't look as crazy as some of the ones we've dealt with so far. Uh, but I just want to go through the same exact procedure that we've been doing with everything else. And you might think, well, I, I can do it in an easier way than your procedure. And that's probably true. But there's an advantage to sticking to a procedure. It's that you get a lot of good practice at it. So when things get more complicated, you know a procedure you can stick to. So I need to get the same denominator everywhere. So I'm going to multiply everything by delta over delta. Okay, That's my crazy one in this example. And when you carry that multiplication through, what we get is 11 delta over delta plus 6 delta squared over delta equals negative 4 over delta. And since this is an equation with the same denominator everywhere, I can cross out those denominators. And now all I have left is 11 delta plus 6 delta squared equals negative 4. And this looks like a quadratic to me, so I'm just going to rearrange it with 0 on one side. 6 delta squared plus 11 delta plus 4 equals 0. Oh, great. Well, this is one of those more complicated ones where we have a number in front of the x squared. So I'm going to pull out my big X. 6 times 4 is 24. Drop down the middle term, that 11. OK, and that goes at the bottom of the X. Now, what multiplies to 24 but adds to 11? Um, 8 and 3. So let's go ahead and write this down here. We're going to say x plus 8, and it's divided by, I want to be careful here, it is divided by the number that's in front, OK? And it's multiplied by the other uh, term we found, which was 3, also divided by that 6, OK? And that whole thing. That's going to be my factored form. We're not quite done yet. I need to simplify this some more. Uh, this one simplifies to x plus 4 over 3. This one simplifies to x plus 1 over 2. And now, because there are still fractions left, I'm going to move those denominators over in front of the x. This is the trick that lets this work for us. And it, it makes factoring much easier uh, than it would be by other methods. 2x plus 1. So that is the factored form of this guy, except somehow I changed all my x's to all my triangles to x's. So let's at least try to be a little more consistent. Okay, there's my there's my equation. Uh, this is equivalent to what we started with in the beginning. And now we just have to solve it. So I'm gonna look at this and say, great. 3 delta plus 4 equals 0. That means delta equals negative 4 thirds. And 2 delta plus 1 equals 0. That means delta equals negative 1 half. These are my two solutions to the equation. Now, are we done? No. Remember, we need to always check for domain restrictions. So what's the domain restriction in this guy? Well, I only see one fraction with a variable on the bottom. So from this guy, I can see that delta cannot be 0. That's my domain restriction. Because if delta equals 0, then the whole equation blows up and goes to infinity. Now, are these answers 0? They're not. So they're both good. I have two solutions to this equation.